Okay, so this point in the dressmaking process, quarantine really started to hit me hard, and uh, what you're about to see is is part of that. I was also on my second coffee for the day, so whoo boy howdy, uh, angry gay second coffee, not a not a not a great mixture for um, a calm soul. <laughs> Yeah, guess who's back in the closet? If this bit is bad, I might just toss it. So I find myself back in the closet again. Now for the reasons you might think, I did not need to change the location, but what did happen is that an individual came to my house who shall remain nameless and decided to make naughty brownies. And so my house smells like a Rastafarian Christmas. The light is so bad in here, but it smells so naughty out there. And look, I'm what we call a good boy, and I don't want to sully my chances at heaven. Because I'm pretty sure Divine is there, and good golly gosh do I want to meet that one. Also, I have an irrational fear of what some might consider cool people, which is why every time I ever purchase naughty plant or any other uh, naughty substance, I would always feel super nervous, especially because they always tried to talk to me. And it just felt weird, like every single purveyor of naughty product for some reason seems to want to be friends. And I don't want to partake of the naughty product with the purveyor of the naughty product. Someone getting shot? Like, I don't want to hang out with a guy who sold me my car. I don't want to drive around in my VW Jetta with you, Chet. I'm sorry. We don't have that kind of relationship. But anyway, you're not here for all that. We're back again, and I'm finishing up the dress. Um, I still have yet to put the skirt on and just sew all the little little bits and pieces together. Anyway, let's get to work. Hi, I'm standing now. I know that the exposure for this video has been all over the place, and that's just because I'm lazy. I didn't go to film school to change the exposure on a camera, okay? I went to film school to start a failing YouTube channel. I am like, I am like ghostly white. I'm egg white. But anyway, the reason I'm in here and no longer in the closet is because I can't, I can't, I can't get into the office. I can't enter into the space and use it for my own, my own purposes. Which I don't understand because my boyfriend knows full well that when I entered into this home, I was allowed to sleep in his room and the office was essentially mine, okay? I don't pay rent on the room that I sleep in. I pay rent on the office, which is the only available room. I know that doesn't make much sense, but my with my roommates, and there's so much things going on in here. I know you're asking Tyler, why couldn't you just split half the rent of his room? Um, because his room is like $14,000 in rent. And guess how much money I made on my last YouTube video? That's right, four cents. So I'm gonna have to be very sneaky about this. Hmm. Oh, hey. Hi, how you doing? Guys, we did it. He didn't notice a thing. He was, um, he, so he was definitely on a work call. Also, I totally forgot that my scissors were under my armpit and I fully dropped them right before the last shot. Look how close they came to my foot. Look at that. That is a hair's width away from losing two of my toes. The Lord God is with me today. After my little brush with God, I used that euphoria of my near-death experience to attack this dress with all the gusto of a 12-year-old child locked in a warehouse full of Mountain Dew. I stitched up the bottom of the bodice, and while doing that, I decided to play a little game I like to call Safety Pin Basketball. Oh, ho, 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 Michael Jordan. I am the LeBron James of safety pins. Yes. Nope. Come on. No, I've been doing so well. She does not look that bad. All right. I suppose you're wondering how I was able to operate a foot pedal without an, you know, an available foot, uh, but luckily God gave me these rich, luscious thighs, which uh, have certainly earned their keep today. Okay, quick pause. So I was gonna give you guys one of Jody's, Tyler's, one, one of my hints. So what I do instead of like t tying a knot in the threads, I just push the magic reverse button, uh, back it up, and just go over it a couple times, back and forth, back and forth. That way I never have to tie a knot to end my stitch. But here's the problem. Problem pose. I have never seen any other YouTube sewing tutorial channel do that. I've never seen Angela Clayton do it. I've never seen others do it. Makira Tewers, I don't think has ever done it. it. Not not once in her life. She ties those knots. She's a hard-working girl. But yeah, I just go back and forth, back and forth, and it's super lazy. Does it look as great sometimes? 
But my question is, am I being mean to old Bessie here? Am I being mean to my machine? I need to name my machine. Cornelius. Am I... Hmm. <laughs> Where's your baby? Where's your little baby? Oh, get my nose. Dig my nose out. Am I being mean to... to... Cornelius? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know if I'm being mean or if I'm doing the right thing. Someone who has more knowledge than me, it, please explain. Speaking of Angela Clayton though, she is essentially the individual who taught me how to sew through her videos. Like I had no idea what I was doing. A lot of the techniques that you see, I learned from her. So if you want an like an actual sewing tutorial of someone who's d t teaching you instead of sh just shoving a camera into a into the inner workings of a sewing machine, check her out. She's great. So I used to think sleeves were very hard, um, and then I stopped being a little whiny buddy. So I just murdered and disemboweled a blazer and got these pieces. So these are the arm pieces. This is the top, this is the bottom. Oh, that's, flip that. There we go. Now these sleeves are a little short for me, so I'm going to add about six inches to the bottom or roughly a marker length, which is actually what I'm using. I'm giving myself um, a little over an inch, which is plenty of seam allowance for this. Just because for sleeves, you can, you can, you can, you can, my God, I cannot make words. It's fine if the sleeves are a little too big, you can always take them in. The problem is you, it's, it's so, it's a pain in the butt to put fabric in to make the sleeves bigger. So always make them wider. I have three markers. None of these so far have been working and I never know which ones do work and which ones don't. So I just grab a handful. God, I'm strapped. But we're gonna solve that today. Okay, that one does not work very well. So what we're gonna do is put B for bad, perfect. That one's also bad, so we're gonna go B for bad. How's this one? Oh, hey, we got a beauty right here. And so I marked that one B for beauty. Okay, so here are all my pieces for my sleeves. So I labeled my sleeves S, L, R, F. Now, what this means is sleeve for S, S, L equals, equals, equals sleeve, R equals right, so this is going to be my right arm, and F equals when two got together. So what I've done is that I find it very important to mark on your sleeve uh, where this rounded part meets the uh, point of the top of the back of the sleeve, because I get very confused very easily, and so that just, that just helps. Little piece of advice. Now sew it up real good. So I just finished my sleeves, and gosh, don, gone, darn, diddly done, they do look kind of not bad. I do say so myself. So I realized that I need to take one sleeve in a little bit because it was far too loose on my forearm and um, I kept, I just, I kept trying and good, good, good golly gosh, it's like rivers in the Amazon. So yeah, I took this sleeve in a little bit at the forearm. The other sleeve on my right arm didn't need as much taking in and that's just because this forearm is bigger than this forearm for reasons. It's because I like bowling. Get your head out of the gutter. Fun story, I actually do not like bowling due to one very specific evening where I decided to go bowling with my friends. What we did not realize is bowling league was happening that night and oh good lord when we went in the mullets were out. We were asked politely to leave and boy howdy did we turn around and ski daddle on out of there. And I kid you not the assortment of mullets around us began clapping as we left. It was very strange and I've never experienced anything like it before. So I don't want to do lining for this leaf, so we're just going to do a rolled hem, which is my favorite kind of hem unless Go Tell It on the Mountain is playing. Get it? Him. Wink. So how this works is it's, you usually do it with two hands, but I'm holding a camera, so that's not, we, who made things difficult on ourselves. So we're going to fold them in and pinch them like this. Ah. So that they make a fun little grouchy mouth. Feed me, Seymour. Now sew that up. Also, this is what your uh, rolled inward hem should look like when it's done. Uh, as you can see, there are no frays, and that's precisely what we want. There is nothing worse than pulling threads out of your armpit at the end of the day. And now it's time to sew the sleeves on. Now what you see me doing here is cutting along the curve of the sleeve hole on the garment itself. Ugh, I need to find a better term than sleeve hole. Any curving along the sleeve pit is going to result in pulling in the fabric itself and we don't want that. At this point I hopped on a two-wheeled leg pumper and took to the town. And then there's this guy who's like fully walking barefoot down the street with his dog. Oh, I also passed a golf course. Like live your best life and enjoy, you know, whatever God lets you enjoy. But I can't take a sport seriously where professionals in the sport look like a diet of Cheez-Its and Oreos has sustained them thus far. Was that a mean thing to say? Like I know people I know people just want to play golf and that's fine, like I shouldn't give a damn. I don't know, something about the summer sun just brings out the worst in me. Also, I found this super weird like paint bubble on the side of this wall. It's bizarre, look at it. I have to free it. 
I have to free it from its binds. Just gonna poke it with a stick, maybe? Oh! Oh, look at that. Oh, empty the bladder of your wall. Well, there's one good deed done today, so. With that good deed and the insults to the golfers, I think that kind of balances me out for the day. I'm no longer evil and just neutral. Okay, but why would I buy this when I could just put cayenne pepper in a Bud Light? Look at this quizzical little baby. It's like he's asking, are you my daddy? Yeah, kid, I'm your dad. Don't worry, you'll see the resemblance when you grow a beard. Also, I did not get it on camera at the time, but I swear I saw someone rolling down the street using one of those four-wheel dollies as a skateboard, the kind that you can get at Home Depot. It's like he was role-playing as a couch. Okay, back to work. To put the sleeve on, you're gonna pin the bottom of the seam of the sleeve to the armpit seam of the bodice. Is that, yeah, right there? You got, okay, good. Now pin the sleeve on working from one side to the other. Working from one side to the other, it allows you to get a good fit just in case, let's say the sleeve is wider than the sleeve, the sleeve pit. Try it on, make sure you like it, and then sew that baby up. The problem with a dress like this is that there is, uh, this is my arm mobility. That's as far, that's as far as I can move. Women in those days didn't, weren't required to move. They didn't, they didn't have to throw spears at a boar. I'm happy with this. Um, now I'm gonna sew in the lining. Okay, so I know I made a big stink about getting threads in my rich Portuguese underarm hair, but I couldn't, I, which, I didn't wanna, ugh, mm, okay. So I didn't wanna show a stitch on the outside of the sleeve because I think that it looks graceful and elegant and beautiful like that. And there's not really much I can do to cover that up because I don't want to throw lace all over it. So I decided to just stitch the inner lining uh, directly out so that there are frayed ends. And I know that, I know it looks bad, but no one's gonna see it. I don't think I have to worry. I think this, it, I think I, I know, I'll know, and you'll know, and everyone who watches this video will know too. But luckily, I only have like 40, 73 subscribers, so I don't have that much to worry about. So I decided to add a very long sleeve attached uh, to my actual sleeve, and this is the piece that I cut out for it. It is um, a very, very large pie. Uh, here's a sandal for scale. Because you have little T-Rex arms at the moment, just have your boyfriends above the dress for you. Hey Shane, can you, uh, can you do, can you, huh? can you flavor me? Thank you. So I added this thing. It's like a side sleeve, which I am now debating if I should have it on both sides or just keep it on the one. I don't know. I kind of I like the um, non-symmetry. I sound like a math major. No, you don't. Pem does. Now you do. Okay, so I'm gonna have to figure out something to do about that because that's. But I do love that sleeve. That's lovely. Ooh. God. This is a giant panel. Of fabric but guess what underneath it is another giant panel making one long panel this is gonna be our skirt but it needs enough volume to look good with the um, with the I can't why can't I not remember what it's called it needs enough volume to look good with the flare skirt is what I'm going to call it even though that's not right and I think I think I have enough because I'm also gonna leave a slit open at the front at the very front in the very center in the Tudor kind of style and have uh, this red fabric underneath it. It's gonna look very nice. This little V right here, this is the front of the dress, the very uh, bottom part that grow goes right over your genitalia. This dips down and so we can't sew a straight piece of, of skirt fabric directly onto it. That's a no-no. So what we need to do is cut this part off right there because that way the end of your dress will not uh, trip you over. Measure with your scissors and then go ahead and do that. So this is a sleeve, this is the bottom of the skirt. What you're gonna do is take the panel for the skirt and flip it over so that these, uh, so that the outsides are matching, if that, if that makes any sense. So is that, does this, am I, am I at all good at teaching or are you guys just figuring this out on your, on your own? That is, if anyone's even making this dress, I assume most of you are just watching this to you know, watch a drag queen age in real time. But if you uh, match them like that, and then pin it and sew these pieces together, you flip it, and there is no no seam, and that's what you want. And she is looking relaxed. Oh, <laughs> you. So I uploaded a lot of this footage onto my computer and realized that I have 70 gigabytes of footage so far, and I'm not even done with the dress. For people who don't understand that, it's like a backpack in Minecraft. For people who don't understand that, it's like you took all of the sand at the beach and put it in your refrigerator. So your boy still has to hem the skirt. And guess what? I still haven't found 
my measuring tape. But I have determined that you need to take off uh, roughly the size of an iPhone from the bottom of your skirt. So that's what we're gonna do. You may be asking yourself, self, I only have this diddly little Samsung, can I use that? But let me tell you, I actually cut this dress a little too short, and what I should have used was a Motorola razor. Okay, so wow, I was vacuuming. I know, a strange thing for me to do of all people. I got too close, I got too close to my sewing machine right there. I caught the thread in the vacuum, and you may think that's all, no, no, no. I just cut all of this out. So I messed up my sewing machine, something fierce doing that. I don't know what's wrong with it, but good golly, Miss Molly. Yeah, remember when I said this? Am I being mean to, to Cornelius? But don't worry, we had another one waiting in the wings, and so I sewed up the sleeve, sewed up the hem, and guess what we have now? If you want to know how I did my makeup, I just reversed the footage of me taking off my makeup, so just slow this down and watch that, and there's your tutorial. So yes, I'm quite happy with how this dress turned out, and no, it is not zipped up, so please don't judge its appearance on how I'm wearing it right now. The only real issue I have with it is, of course, um, mobility. Like, I can't, I can't move my arms. But I can't think of a time I ever needed to move my arms in a dress. In fact, I'm, I'm quite the aggressively moving drag queen, so it might be best if there's something to hold me down so I'm not striking people on accident. I know it's weird that I'm bending over, but it's the only way I can get into frame. If you do want a little bit more mobility, and you still want to make something historical, I'd recommend something from the Regency era. You know, Pride and Prejudice, and I think. I don't like the Regency era because it's, it's, it's very boring. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for wanting to learn all of my secrets. Go forth and create your own nonsense pieces of clothing. You have the tools to go out and make yourself look like a real hot pile of trash. So go, flock children, be gone. Oh god, did I just rip it? So I forgot to mention, in order to finish this dress, you will absolutely need someone to help you zip it up. Because let's just say this is not the dress to be fighting in.